I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Welcome back. This is part two of our Jagged Edge Table Runner tutorial. So let's finish that runner up. Since this is going to be a flipped runner, we have to have somewhere to flip it, some opening. Now if I leave the opening here, after it's flipped, I have to get that tucked back in and stitched up. It's really hard to do it neatly, but we can take out some of this stitching and flip it through there. So some of your patchwork stitching here, we're just going to snip out a section. Use your seam ripper, use your snippers, and take out about a six or seven inch length. So I've snipped out the stitches there. So I've got an opening here. Now, when I flip it, it puts a little stress on these seams. So I'm going to back tack right here, and I'm going to restitch these seams so that they won't come apart as I flip it. So let's back tack here. So I'm just going to anchor this so it won't come apart. Same thing at the other end. Now these two little seams here, I'm going to back tack there so they won't come apart also. See, you can see this one is already coming apart a little. So we're just going to restitch it and back tack. The last step I do here is to do a stay stitch. So I'm going to first pull out all my little thready things from the stitching I took out because that doesn't look very nice. And I am going to sew along this opening on each side separately at almost a quarter inch. And that will keep it from stretching. So just just this one layer by itself. This is called stay stitching. Any of you who've sewn any garments, stay stitching helps keep things in place. And it's almost on the seam line. It doesn't have to go all the way across. It's just to keep it from getting distorted. We're going to do the same thing along this open edge. A little bit in the seam allowance, a little shy of the previous stitching line. There, so there's where it was stitched. We just opened it up right there. Now we're going to take this over to our cutting table and cut off all the excess from the backing and batting. So we've got the runner front to back here, but we need to get rid of all this excess backing and batting. So we're going to just use our sharp scissors and we're going to cut off the back and the batting right even with the top. So I'm just going right along the edge. We are also going to be trimming off the excess in the points. So you can do that now if you want. So I'm not going to the stitching line, but near it. So I'm just going to, see I'm going to snip these points off. You can do it at the end or you can do it as you trim. So I'm going right along the edge, snipping off that excess. Not too close. Just some of the excess off so when you flip it, you can get a nice point. Last step before we flip the runner, we need to clip these corners or it won't flip flat. So I need to clip this to my stitching line, almost to the stitching line. So I've got the, snip, the tip of the scissors right there make a nice sharp cut. So I'm pointing to that stitching line. I'm using my index finger to help push the scissors down. All right, we're ready to flip the runner. This is kind of the magic part. So find your opening. One hand goes in and just go to the far end and flip it right side out. 
Same thing on the other end. Now, of course, it looks really, really messy like that, but put one hand back in. Find one of the corners. So if you take your fingernail from the inside and hold on to it here, move the finger around inside there, and then iron it flat. So you're going to want to do that with every point. Since we clipped away most of the excess, they turn really pretty easily. Of course, there's tools you can use to get that point nice and sharp. Some people will use a chopstick. This is another method I like to use. I put my thumb out here on the point and a finger inside and then you can press and it comes out pretty flat. The runner is all flipped and all the corners are pointed out. It still looks kind of messy. So what you wanna do is pull it out flat and I'm gonna hold it with my elbows here and I am going to gently pull apart each one of these. So I'm getting this part in here flat. And it's additionally ironing these points better. All the way down the runner. Now just start ironing it flat with your hands, again, along the grain. Look how nice that's laying. Now we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna do the same thing from the back. Now this you can iron really in any direction because its straight grain is like this. All right, we've got it all flipped and laid out flat. And look, you can barely even see the opening. So the opening is right here, but we stay stitched it, it's ironed. So we will be able to get that neatly closed. So I'm gonna take it to the machine and we are going to edge stitch it and quilt it. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to edge stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And the easiest way to stitch that is from the back side. So I'm gonna flip it over. It's just much easier for stitching purposes to go right along the edge from the back side. I'm gonna use a gold thread because I think that looks best from both sides. And I'm just going to stitch right near the edge. You're gonna pivot again at all those corners. We're just gonna go all the way around and this will make the runner lay nice and flat and it's just a nice decorative stitch right around the edge. It's all edge stitched. Now all we have to do is quilt the top and close up our, close up our opening. The neatest way to do it would be if you would whip stitch it by hand with a needle and thread. I'm not big on hand sewing. I don't do it a lot. And I know I can stitch this when I quilt the runner. So I'm gonna be quilting the runner along this patchwork here and I can just get that stitched up right at that time. So we've already got it turned in a quarter inch here. We've got it stay stitched, so we're gonna match these seams and I'm just gonna put some little pins in here just to keep it in place. I'm not pinning all the way through to the back. I'm just pinning the top, this piece to this piece right here. This is just holding it in place till we get it quilted. So cover up your stay stitching. Just put a couple pins in to get it nice and neat. Now we're gonna quilt the runner and we'll close that opening up at the same time. So to quilt it, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna be stitching like this. So I'm gonna put a few pins in just to make sure nothing moves. So I'm gonna pin it at these intersections here. So I am pinning through all the layers now. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start here, and then I'm gonna go all the way over here, and all the way over here, down to the end of the runner. Then when I come back to the other end, it'll cross over the other way. The effect is a stitching that looks like this. And you can, you can go here and pivot every time if you want, then go back up and pivot. I just happen to go here, go all the way over, two at a time, all the way over. It's less turning. So let's start right here. We're gonna stitch in the ditch. So you can feel the seam allowances here are facing that way, so it's a little less 
full right here. So we're going to want to stitch right on the side of the seam right here. So my needle is right along the stitch line. And you're going to pivot at the intersection. So we call it stitching in the ditch, but a lot of times it's stitching near the ditch, and that's fine. The closer you are to the ditch, the more hidden the sewing will be. Again, turn the flywheel by hand if you need to, to get to the corner, and then pivot. Now we're coming to the opening. I'll, I'll show you what we do at the opening. To close the opening up, instead of going in the ditch, I'm just going to go right near the ditch. So I'm going to make a very small movement over so I'm closing this up. If you're using a good color thread, it won't show very much when the whole runner's done. Again, if you don't want it to show at all, you can do it by hand. Make sure my seams line up there. As soon as you're past that opening, you can go right back to in the ditch. All right, I'm almost back to where I started. Just this last side. Now I'll flip it over and you can see where I quilted it, because you really can't see from this side at all. So there's just a nice diamond shape right in the middle. Of course you can use any pattern you want. You could, you could quilt all over the top. You could do something in each square. But this is the simplest way and it really holds it together very nicely. All we have to do now is give it one last steam press. I've got the whole runner stitched up now. It turned out really nice. Donna, it does look really good. Great job sewing it. it. The cutting was very easy. Four inch squares, simple to cut. I think that it's a good beginner cut. It's a good thing to you know start with. And I'll set this out here. I got a couple more we're gonna show. Go ahead, you wanna show the people that one? This is a batik combination that we did. Really nice Hoffman batiks. I also did a bordered back on this one, so I used a narrower back. I just sewed borders on each side, then when you put it front to back and trim around the edges, it gives these nice triangles. We've also got an Easter one here. Mm -hmm. so you can see the possibilities, all yeah. the holidays. We've done Christmas, Easter, Halloween, all the different holidays. Really nice. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure to give it the thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.